Hello and welcome to the Nikon D5200 channel. Uh, today we're going to have a look at reversal rings which are a bit of a blast from the past. Uh, they are very low tech compared to the high tech camera equipment that we're used to today and as a result of that low tech they're also very cheap which is always handy. Um, they are a cheap and cheerful way of getting into macro photography and uh, as such they're very useful. Uh, the idea of a reversal ring is that you attach it to the front of your lens and then switch your lens around and attach it back onto the camera using that ring. So you're looking through the front of the lens through to the back um, rather than from the back through to the front. And that essentially turns your lens into a macro lens. Um, it can be used on pretty much any sort of lens, uh, particularly any uh, standard lens and prime lens and also anything that, um, for example, your kit lens, if you've got a 55, uh, sorry, 18 to 55 mil lens that you've got with the camera, uh, you can use it on one of those as well. So uh, let's just have a quick look at it and I'll show you then how to use it. Okay, so this is what the reversal ring actually looks like. As you can see, basically, it's uh, just a piece of um, aluminium. Uh, it has the thread on one side and the flange on the other and obviously a grippy bit in the middle. So the thread uh, actually attaches to the front of your lens and that's why you need to know the diameter of the lens when you order one. Uh, as I say, if you've got a kit lens, uh, the standard 18 to 55mm Nikon lens, then you're looking for a 52mm diameter. Uh, and that will attach to the front of your lens and you literally reverse then the lens and you attach it uh, with this flange to the camera. As again, it's dot to dot. Uh, it's very straightforward, it's quite simple, uh, but it is a, a relatively ingenious piece of kit when you think about it. Uh, simple things often are. Uh, and it allows you, as I say, to have a crack at uh, some macro photography uh, with the lenses that you've got and without actually spending too much money on buying new or different lenses. One of the advantages of this one or the, uh, the reversal ring, is that you can attach any lens then to the front of your camera. So uh, you could, for example, if you've got some old manual Nikon lenses, which you wouldn't want to use particularly or necessarily with the D5200, uh, you can attach those. Or if indeed you've moved over to Nikon from another manufacturer, you can use their lenses. Uh, because all you have to do is stick it on the front. As you can see, there's no real physical contact between the D5200 and the lens itself. So generic lenses, Canon lenses, uh, any of the other lenses, uh, lens manufacturers, all can be attached to your Nikon to shoot macro via this reversal ring. Okay, so uh, let's uh, see how this works with a camera. Uh, I've got here a uh, Nikon D5200, which I'll switch on now. Uh, that will avoid embarrassment later on. Uh, and on here I've got um, a 50mm Nikon Series E lens. Um, it's a f1.8, which is a really good lens. And one of the advantages of having a, a reversal ring is that you can actually use it with almost any lens, and in particular with old manual lenses. One of the reasons for that is because everything you're about to do with this reversal lens is going to be manual. Uh, there are no mod cons with this. There's no autofocus, there's no um, setting aperture on the back or anything like that. It's all very basic. So, as you see, I attach it to the front uh, on the thread, that's pretty basic, and uh, go dot to dot on the back, and it looks like that. Now, if you've got a standard kit lens, 18 to 55 mil. Uh, the diameter of the thread that you're looking for here is 52 millimeters um, and that will ensure that you can attach that obviously to the front of the lens which then you can reverse and as you can see look, uh, attach it to the camera. It does look a bit odd and it is a bit odd but in fact it does work and it works really well. Um, you can look at it obviously through the lens with the eyepiece, but you can also look through the, um, the back screen as well, should you wish to, uh, but the eyepiece is probably better. And essentially then what you do is you um, move the camera to and away from the subject until you get it sharp. If you've got a prime lens, uh, or even a zoom for that matter, uh, the best setting to put it onto is infinity. Uh, you've got to remember with a reversal lens, 
that uh, reversal ring, sorry, that everything is in reverse. So infinity will allow you to get closer to the subject rather than further away. And likewise, if you've got a, an 18 to 55, then you want it on 18 rather than 55, because then you can get closer to the subject and take more detailed images. Um, the best thing we always find is to shoot something that's reasonably big to start off with. And that way, uh, once you've taken the picture, you can identify on the frame by blowing it up, either on the back screen or on the computer, um, the exact point of sharpness. Obviously, one of the aspects of macro photography is that it is a very small depth of field, and so consequently, not much is going to be sharp anyway, but the best thing to do is to try to make sure that you identify that area so that you can use it to its best. So, as I say, it's all very manual. Uh, you just switch it on, you look through the lens of the camera until you get to the point where it is sharp. And here, for example, is the point where I'm looking at it now and it's sharp. Um, which is pretty close and probably closer than it would normally be. Um, it's all manual. So in terms of aperture, etc., you would have to suck it and see, see how, how it works. You will have to sort out your own lighting. Um, it's very much taking you back to the very basics of photography. And most of macro photography is, is a, a large degree of trial and error, trying to make things work, trying to get the lighting right. So. It's, it's fairly, um, fairly indicative of how macro photography is anyway, um, but of course it's a lot cheaper than buying a macro lens, uh, at least initially. Um, because you're moving in and out all the time, that in itself causes its own problems. And so we'd normally recommend that you just pick up a, a tripod, either a, a full-size tripod that you can bring to the side of the table, or in this instance, a tabletop tripod, uh, just to give you that stability really uh, so that that's one less thing you have to worry about. These are pretty cheap. Uh, you can get them for £20 or $30 or so. Uh, we'll knock some links up somewhere so that you can uh, click through and, and if you want to buy one, you can. Um, the reversal ring itself uh, is very cheap. You can pick one up for £3, $5, something like that. And uh, on the basis of that alone, it's probably worth just giving it a go. Um, macro photography is, is great fun. It allows you to get in really close um, to your subject and take some different and often quite astonishing images, um, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, anyway, we have done some pictures with this lens, with this ring, and obviously this camera, uh, which we'll tack on to the end now. Uh, but that was an introduction into reversal rings. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, get one, have a go see what it does for you, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye.